Hi. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. Good day. <laughs> welcome to the big show. Hey guys, what's up? It's Mr. A. Uh, back with you to talk a little bit about our next conic section, which is circles. Uh, section 10.3 in the book. Here's homework number three. I'll let you hit pause and go ahead and write that down. So there's just a little, uh, this is actually kind of a, a throwback cartoon from last year when gas prices were really high. But uh, has a little bit of meaning right now with the economic deal the way it is. So I thought it was kind of a good one. Hope you liked it. So here looking at conic sections, we already studied a parabola which we looked at as being a cut through the cone with a plane and the cut is parallel to the side of the cone. Now we're going to look here today at circles which is when you cut the cone parallel to the base and it creates a circle. And of course the base of the circle or the base of the cone itself is a circle so that makes sense. Here's just a little picture of how kind of all the conic sections relate to each other and the way they look given kind of a, a common point that they share. Almost like a vertex but a little bit different. Uh, just a little picture for you circles. I guess the aliens brought us conic sections. Um, I can't tell you too much about how they make it but if they ever try to abduct you look out. Okay, It's not fun. Take it from me. Uh, as we're talking about circles, I want to talk to you a little bit about note-taking skills. And I might do a whole other little video on note-taking skills as well, but remember I told you that conic sections require good note-taking. That's true. Nothing's changed. But let's talk about how you take good notes. For example, looking at this slide, there's a couple, there's a lot of text on here. And I normally wouldn't fill a page with text. But once you get to college, or if you ever have somebody that does give you a lot of text in a PowerPoint, or you have a professor that talks a lot, you have to learn to kind of just get through the notes and write down the important things. Any of you that are out there trying to copy down everything I say or everything that's written are going to get really behind in college. So for example, here when I was in college, what I would do is I would just write down what I thought were keywords. For example, what's important? radius, how big, then a question mark, then center, and I'd put where with a question mark. And then the rest of it wouldn't even be on the paper. Now that could be a mistake, especially in college when you have a few days between classes. So what I would do is I would go home uh, at night. For example, if my class was on a Monday, I'd go home at night on that Monday and then I would flip through my notes and I'd try to go through my shorthand and then supplement it with any other little remarks I needed to make just to make sure that uh, I was getting all the information down and I would look at it the first night when my brain was still fresh with what had happened that day. If you wait too long and you go back to look at your notes and it's filled with a bunch of shorthand that you don't even understand then it's going to be really tough. So just keep that in mind as you're taking notes. Remember we talked about flashlight conics? You guys in class got this right away. You know just point the flashlight at the wall. It's going to give you a circle. Now I want you to take a look at, we obviously have a circle and we have the equation of a circle as well. The equation of the circle looks a little bit different than anything we've seen because now both x and y are squared. So as we look at that, can you notice anything about the circle and maybe the numbers that are here? Well right away I noticed that the circle intersects basically like a 3 on every side, absolute value of 3. Well, that distance coming out from the center, okay, so that tells me that my radius is 3. And remember, we did look at that previous slide, I almost forgot to mention, that this does tell you some important things about circles. We need to know what's the radius to know how big it is and the center for where it is on the graph. So from this I can tell that the radius is 3, and I can also tell that C for center is 0 comma 0. Okay, well how do you notice that these numbers relate? Take a look at that and see if you can figure it out. Maybe press pause if you want to think about it. You know, I know that 3 squared is 9, but the zeros, I don't know, maybe there's there's no constants in here, so we could say that that's sort of 0, 0. Let's look, uh, excuse me, let's look at another one and let's see what we get. I'll give you a little clue here that this is the center 
So if you line this up, it looks like the center is at 3, negative 1. And then if you look at the corresponding radius, it looks like two units from 1 to 3. So the radius is 2. So let's take a look at what we know again. Well, I can tell you that 2 squared is 4. And if you look at the numbers, we know that this is negative 3 and positive 3. That must have some sort of meaning. And then this is positive 1 and negative 1. Well, it looks to me like that's obvious relationship. And it almost looks like what we did with parabolas. Remember that we had, we had x minus h and we had y minus k. And this is a recurring theme for a reason. It's going to keep coming back that h and k is like that anchoring point. It's In a circle, it's called a center. In a parabola or anything else that we studied, it's usually called a vertex. So x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to, well, notice if I take the radius and square it, I get 4. So we'll call that the radius squared. And that's it. It looks like what you've just done is written the equation. Excuse me, I'll go back one. We just written the equation for a circle. Okay, let's test that out. Test out our equation over here. Here we've got, let's see, there's no h, so I'll say this is 0. And I've got k is negative 1, so we take the opposite of that to get 1. And that should get me my center. And that does look like a center to me, so it looks like we're good there. And then let's look at 16. If that's r squared, if r squared is 16, then in order to find r, which is the radius, I'll take the square root and I get r is 4. So if I go 4 units out, that is my radius exactly. Okay, so now we figured out that the equation of a circle, the general form, is this where we have, I called it a vertex. I don't know why I did that. That's my fault. We don't call that a vertex with a circle. We call that a center. My bad, sorry. Center at h comma k, and we have a radius of r. All right, so let's take a look. Let's go ahead and graph this one. And before we graph, let's get our basic information. I know that my center is going to be the opposite of these constants. So it'll be 1 comma negative 2. I'll just take the opposite of both. For the radius, I know that r squared is 9. So then if I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get r is 3. Okay, so now I have that information. I'll just go ahead and let's graph that. So I'm just going to put down a coordinate plane, and I'll go to 1, negative 2, that's my center, with a radius of 3. So let's go 3 units in every direction. We'll go right, up, left, and down. Now you can freehand that. I'm kind of scared to freehand it. Let's see what it looks like. No, it's not too bad, but I got a cool little trick over here that I can use, cool little button. It's going to let me put down that circle. So there we go. We ended up with our radius of 3, and my center was here at 1, negative 2. That wasn't too tough.